Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode nine of the Jake's Take with Jacob Elyushar podcast. I'm your host, Jacob Elyushar, the chief content producer and writer of the Jake of Jake's Take.com, a pop culture and entertainment news website. I am so happy that I got I'm catching up with one of my friends, the one and only Scotty Dynamo. And I'm also talking to his boyfriend and partner, Mike Heslin. How are you guys? Doing well. How are you? I'm doing great, guys. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedules to talk with me. Sure, I nice really appreciate it. No problem. I'm happy to be here. All righty. So, Scotty, it's been four years since we last met. For those of you who don't know, I lived in Kansas City before I met to New York, and then I met Scotty at the can- at an event at the Kansas City Fashion Week when he was DJing on top of a nice rooftop party. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, it was a warm summer night. Um, and, uh, the girls and some guys were strutting down the runway doing their thing. Um, and yeah, I was, uh, I was doing my thing in Kansas city and, you know, getting to know everyone there. It was a great time. Um, honestly, Kansas city and St. Louis really know how to party. I do have to say, um, we actually went back to St. Louis uh, in, in August of this year and it's, I don't know, people just really, they have a good time. They know how to have a good time. Oh, yeah, we yeah. they're so nice. It's, it was it was a really good time. Awesome, awesome. And I, this is, and Scotty, this has been four years since we last corresponded on the JakesTake dot com. For those of you who want to read Scotty's inter, first interview, it's up online. It's a conversation with Sky Dynamo and Scotty. How have you grown as a performer and, and entertainment entrepreneur since the last time we spoke? Oh my goodness. Um, I like to think I've grown, um, in all the right ways, but, um, yeah, I mean, I think I've just, uh, oh my God. Yeah. I mean, I think I'm doing a lot of stuff, I guess, behind the scenes. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of stuff that might not necessarily be shared on YouTube. Um, I've been taking the acting a lot more seriously than I was maybe four years ago when I was DJing in Kansas city. Um, so I'm doing a lot more of that, uh, filmed a couple of projects this year which um, I'm excited to kind of share with the world. I think they come out, um, I think, in the spring of 2020. But, um, yeah, honestly, just focusing on the acting a lot more, uh, making a lot more videos with Mike, mm-hmm. um, which is always fun. It's always a good time. And, uh, yeah, I do have a lot of music coming, so I've been working on that. Um, honestly, just kind of kind of building on everything I was doing four years ago, but hopefully just doing it on a bigger scale um, making it sound a bit better, be a bit more fun, but, uh, but yeah, just, uh, everything I've been doing, just more fun and, and, and bigger, hopefully. Awesome. Glad to hear it. And Mike, this is the first time that we're chatting. And so what I always do with my interviews is ask an introductory question. Sure. Let's do it. Okay. So Mike, when do you get interested in the entertainment industry and how did that passion evolve into the desire of pursuing career in the field? Yeah, sure. I mean, what, like uh, when I was five years old, I was that kid who, well, it all started, my parents started taking me to like the local theater and then we would see like the touring theater shows that came in and I was obsessed with Jurassic Park and the Wizard of Oz, it's, like obsessed. And I don't, I just, I guess I'm that cliche kid who was bit by the bug uh, from a young age. I, I asked my dad for Christmas to build me like a customized stage And I would, like, direct the neighborhood kids and, like, shows and stuff. Trying to put on Jurassic Park in your backyard um, at six years old is very difficult. But I pulled it off. Um, Yeah, so it started at a young age. I started doing theater as a kid. And I started directing. And then I went to school for it. I've kind of – I've honestly just kind of always been doing it. It's just been, like, my first passion and love since, I guess, since I came out of the womb. That's pretty cool, and that's incredible. So how did you guys both meet? <laughs> we, uh, we actually met filming a pilot for a TV show together. And, um, yeah, I was the only you know, Canadian on set and had a really big crush on him and just didn't – I was the only one who didn't know anyone else in the project or on the project. And uh, – and yeah, we clicked, we got along really well and uh, kept in touch and one thing led to another and, and uh, yeah, he hasn't been able to get rid of me and uh, ever since. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a funny full, uh, full circle situation because we shot this thing together, I clocked him right away 
And I was asking everyone, I was like, who is that cute? I haven't seen him before. And I was warned by some other people, stay away, uh, I think, who also had similar feelings. <laughs> or like, we're, we're trying to call dibs. But uh, yeah, we hit it off right away. Um, and yeah, we were friends for quite a while, actually, first. And then later on, things progressed. <laughs> took, it, took it to the next level. And, uh, and yeah, here we are. It's been fun ever since. Yeah. <laughs> and you got and guys, please check out their Instagrams. They have incredible stories, and their YouTube videos are awesome and off the chain. Thank you, thank you. I'm, that means a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so both of you are in the industry, so I want to talk to you guys about the challenges that both of you face breaking into the North American entertainment industry, and how did you guys overcome your obstacles? Um, yeah, I mean, I think. The biggest challenge as a musician, actor, or just creative is just, you know, having people find out about your work or hire you to be in these projects. Especially as an actor, you're auditioning and you're kind of, you know, at the mercy of a casting director or producer. And sometimes, you know, a, a decision comes down to the color of an actor's hair or, you know, the shape of their eyebrows or whatever it might be. And so a lot of that stuff is out of your control. So I think you know, we both kind of got to a point where we were like, look, like, why don't we just create our own work and, you know, get, provide ourselves with like our own opportunity to create something fun and, you know, hire our friends and, you know, basically just help create, uh, you know, work for everyone around us in our circle. And so this year we shot our first, I guess, self-created, self-produced TV series. And, uh, that's going to be coming out next year. And it's been, you know, a, a learning experience. It's been such a great time. And, you know, I think the biggest, lear the thing, biggest thing we've learned is sometimes you got to kind of take things in your own hands and just, just create it and just do it. And, you know, now more than ever with technology and, and all that sort of stuff, it's, it's totally possible. You just kind of have to sit down and do it. And, um, you know, the opportunity's out there. <laughs> and then I think we're, uh, yeah, we've got a lot of fun stuff coming in 2020. Awesome, and we can, and I know that you guys talked about a certain pro that project, and it's called the Influencers. So, yes. how did that idea first come about? And can you describe the series to my listeners? Yeah, of course. Um, it came about. We were kind of joking about I don't know some people we know or, or you know, just social media in general uh, earlier this year. And we came up with this idea and pretty instantly we were like, Oh, this is funny. And we ran with it. We, we wrote the whole thing in like two, three months, um, started pitching a couple months after that. And it was a pretty quick process. I mean, getting a TV show made can take years. Um, and we wrote pitch and shot the whole thing within this year. Um, we actually have been in the editing room all week, so it's been it's been a crazy year, but uh, incredible and super rewarding. Um, so it's called the influencers. The influencers is about six um, social media stars who are selected to live in a Big Brother style house to compete for this massive brand deal. Um, but since these people live their lives online and being in this uh, house where every single move is constantly filmed and tracked, and people are watching them at all times, the, the, this curated life that they are presenting online slowly starts to fall apart. And it's like a mockumentary, like The Comeback or Best in Show or American Vandal. So it's fun. It's, it's a comedy. It pokes a lot of fun at, you know, just our current world, social media, all that good stuff. So, um, and I think there's a little bit of, every, of a, you know, there's something for everyone. Whether you love or hate social media, I think you're going to get quite a kick out of this. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I think regardless of whether you're, you know, 14 and just like scrolling through TikTok all day or if you're my parents and don't fully understand what anything is other than like maybe Facebook, um, I, I think there's something for you. And it's, yeah, I think we kind of make fun of, poke fun at just about everything. So I'm really excited for you to check it out. Yeah. Awesome. So I wanted to talk about the characters because are their characters like based – do you take off and say, wait a minute, this guy can have elements of Davey Wavy or like Logan, elements of Logan Paul there, or even Jojo Silva, or any kind of influencers when you came creating the characters? Yeah, there's a little bit of everything. I mean, like, I'm not, not specific people, I would say more like the archetypes, you know what I mean? Um, uh, 
everyone knows that that Coachella influencer. Everyone knows like the fitness dude. You know the Insta couples. It, it, we kind of we definitely there's a lot of um, current references. I don't want to say too much to spoil anything, but there are a lot of current references taken from some of those people. Um, but in general, it, it, we kind of you know we looked at like the archetypes that we think are the most fun or the most prevalent and kind of built from there. I don't know what else to say without giving too much away. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it's you know, we do reference a lot of events that have taken place and especially, you know, those who are active on Twitter or, you know, in the YouTube world and are familiar with like recent scandals will be like, oh, that was totally it, you know, referencing that specific event. But, it, you know, it might go over my parents' head, but. Yeah, but that's what I think is cool. They, for those who are in that world, I think there's a lot of Easter eggs that people will get a kick out of. And then if you aren't so caught up on all that, I think it, there's still plenty for you. And yeah, I think all those jokes still register as well. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So I I really love the concept of this I of this idea. But however, I'm no but however, you guys turned to Kickstarter and set a goal of $10,000, which you rallied your fans, family, and friends about this campaign. And earlier this week, you revealed that that goal was met. So what does this mean? What did meeting that goal mean for the influencers? And can you describe your reaction when you found out that you met your Kickstarter goal? Um, yeah, I mean, it's it was an unbelievable feeling to... To A, reach the goal, especially in such a short amount of time. I mean, we're so, you know, thankful and grateful for people to to have, you know, really rallied behind us and, and supported us and believed in the project the way that they have. And, I mean, it means the world to us. And, I, you know, I, I'm so excited to share it with everyone. Yeah, we were blown away. To be very candid, we were very nervous about it. Um, basically, it, it was for post-production, you know, whatever. And... and we, I mean, neither of us had ever um, done a Kickstarter or any sort of crowdsourcing before, so we were nervous about it, being like, oh, man, can we do this in a month? I think so, but let's just give it a whirl. And we did it within six days, and every single day we would look at each other and be like, wait, what? Like, who are these people donating? This is incredible. Um, and it, our friends and family were super supportive, but... What was more amazing is that the people we don't know who were supporting in spades, and every day we just like were pinching ourselves. We could not believe we we did it, let alone so quickly. And we truly are so grateful. Like we feel so loved and supported. And I don't know. And it also speaks to you know shooting this was like one of the most. Um, fulfilling experiences, not only for us, but I think the whole cast and crew kind of echo like this is special, this is magic, we all feel something. And so I don't know, we've we've just had good vibes from the start and through the Kickstarter to even be receiving it through that and feel love and supported through strangers in the world who are like, yeah, like I, we want to see this and support you. It's pretty tremendous. And that's incredible. And I want to go back a little bit because can you tease the the characters that my viewers will be that my re listeners will be meeting when the show airs? Uh, of course. <laughs> so, um, yeah, as Mike said, there are six social media stars in the house. Um, Mike and I are playing Tyler and Taylor, uh, a lovable Insta couple whose relationship is not exactly what it appears to be on Instagram. Um, we also have Zoe, who is the travel vlogger and jet setter who appears to be in a different city like every other day of the week, um, just living that travel lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Kristen, who is basically our like Coachella, good vibes only, basic white chick. Yeah, and then we have Parker, who's kind of like your online um, thirst trappy Insta trainer, posting all like the shirtless pics. Um, and always at the gym. And then we have Cruz, who's one of those, and I love these people, the, those kind of like self-made entrepreneurs on Instagram or YouTube. Yeah, who the, are the people who basically just like yell into the camera and they just yell basically every motivational quote they were able to find on like a Google image search. Pyramid schemes galore. Yeah, yeah. Basically everything you mute from Instagram. So that being said, it, it, but yeah, all six are very uh, interesting, big personalities in their own way. So, you know, when you put these six characters under the same roof for a week together, 
you know, scandals and dramas bound to happen. Yeah. 